Hi there, this is another video accompanying the Joomla tutorial series developing an MVC component and in this step we're looking at adding versioning. Now I'm going to split this step into two videos, uh, one looking at the general overview and then the second one will actually look at the Joomla observer pattern in detail. And I should say at the outset that this other uh, Joomla documentation page using content history in your component is also worth a look at. It's referred to in the tutorial code, but it's also got some good, good explanation about the whole um, content history functionality. So if we start, uh, I wanted to start by looking at the database view of things. So if you have PHP MyAdmin and you look at the UCM history table, you'll see that that is where Joomla stores all of the versions of the um, records. So the content history functionality allows us to have multiple versions of um, our Hello World records in the same way as it supports uh, multiple versions of content records of articles. So that if we go along and make a mistake after um, saving, then we can go back to a previous version and recover it. And if you look through this table, you'll notice that in this UCM history table, um, they store all sorts of um, records. So for example, um, if we look at the first record here, the data is actually stored in this field here. <clears throat> and if we zoom in there, uh, you'll see this is an article record. Uh, which I've edited and if we then go down to the bottom um, we'll see this is a hello world category record As you can see com hello world and this is a, a category record and just above it is a hello world record So if you see if you, you go down to the end there, you see the latitude and longitude, which are fields that we've got in our records. And um, so basically the version data is stored in this kind of um, JSON encoded set of name value pairs of the records. So given that it's um, uh, associated with different sorts of content, we need to have some sort of indicator which specifies what type of content it is. And that's where this um, UCM type ID comes in because the UCM type ID of the first record there is one, of the last record is 17, and of the one above it is 16. And those refer to entries in our content types table. And this is what needs to be populated by ourselves as configuration data. So number one, you can see type ID is article. And it's got this thing here called a type alias, uh, which is quite an important uh, field. And then down at the bottom, we've got 16, which is our Hello World record, and 17, which is our Hello World category. And the other thing is, if you look at the UCM table, UCM history table, <clears throat> you see the, it's just loading at the moment, but you see the version ID is just a sequence of numbers. So the version ID doesn't refer to any particular type of record or any particular record. It's just a, a general version ID. And it's also got the UCM item ID. And this refers to the ID of the record. So for example, for that Hello World record, there is 189. Um, I think I've got this one here is, if we look up here, the one that I've been editing, it's ID 185, and that will be um, this one here. 
So if we see that in terms of a kind of like an entity relationship di diagram, um, here's our hello world record. We've got an ID, greeting, alias, and all the other sorts of things. And here is our content types record. And uh, this is what we have to populate with the configuration data. The type ID is allocated automatically uh, when we put it in, but we put in com hello world dot hello world as the type alias and some other stuff there. And then in our UCM history uh, record or records, we have got uh, the version ID. We've got the UCM item ID, which refers to the hello world record and the UCM type ID, which refers to the type of content. And then we've got a number of records with the same um, item ID and type ID, which are separated by versions. <clears throat> and we store the version data in this field here. So this is the name, set of name value pairs of the um, record. If we look at kind of like a, an architectural type view, here's our edit form. So this is this form here. And as you can see, it's pretty much the same as we've had in from the previous step, except that we've added two things. One is this um, editor field on the right hand side, which just allows us a text field to um, specify the description. And this version note field, which is here. And it's important to note the version note field isn't written to the hello world record. It is just written to this here, this UCM. So the version note is kind of like a label for the version. <clears throat> and in this case of um, 185, we've got V2 and V3. And if we click on versions, we'll see the ah something has gone wrong. Oh, there they are. Version two and version three, the two version notes there. So this is our edit form, and whenever we change something on our edit form and press save, then it will go through in an HTTP post with the form data and will end up in our table code and will write um, an update to our hello world record. And what happens then is that the table code um, emits an event and when it stores a record, it emits this event on after store. And this event, uh, which is triggered here, is picked up by what I've called the content history library code. And it's actually in this class here, JTable Observer Content History, which is probably the old name for it. It's probably been renamed recently. But this is the code which manages the input into our UCM history. So it gets triggered whenever um, the table code writes a record, writes an update to a record in the database. And it will be run and it will have access to that data. And it will try and determine, do I need to write a new UCM history record, a new version record? Because as it's mentioned in the uh, tutorial code, if we do, for example, a, um, a checkout, then we actually will uh, do a write to the hello world record there, but we don't want to necessarily create a version for that because it's just updating the checkout field. So what happens is that the content history library code here takes the data and performs a hash of it. And it compares the hash with previous hashes, which are stored in the records. But in calculating that hash, it first removes any uh, records which have got ignore changes. So it gets the hello world record and just removes any references to 
the uh, fields that are specified here before it creates the hash. And in that way, the checked out and the checked out time fields don't figure in the hash. So it means that um, when we just update the record to create the checked out or change the checked out fields, the hash will be the same and it won't create a new history record. <clears throat> so as you can see, um, this library code here is actually using the configuration data that we specify in our content types uh, table there. <clears throat> so when it goes through, it will uh, check that hash and if it's different, it will create a new version. So it will write a new record to this table. The version ID will be created automatically. It knows what Hello World record it's doing. It knows it's handling a Hello World record. It picks the version note field um, off the input parameters. So um, as I said, this is implemented via an HTTP post. So when you come through here, you still get the context of that. So you can do your J factory, get input or get application, get input, and actually pick up the input parameters, which have been specified when the form was submitted. So it'll get that uh, version note that way and add that to the record um, together with the save date hash and version data is just a collection of the fields, all of the fields, including the checked out and, and sorts of fields which are ignored in the hash. So that's that little bit of code. Um, the second thing I want to look at is this versions button. So this is the new thing that we have on our edit form. And if we go to our edit form, that's that button there. And if we just put on uh, our debug tools, uh, we can see if we go inspector and we look at versions. So here's our versions button down there. And you can see that on click, it's showing a modal. And the modal is actually just above it. And there's our modal header, modal body. And I'll just zoom in on this again. So here's our modal body. And what we can see is when that modal is shown, it's going to have an iframe. And the iframe has got an option of com content history. So this is the component that is going to run within that iframe. View equals history layout equals modal. Um, TMPL equals component, item ID equals 185, type ID equals 16, and it's also got the type alias there, is com hello world dot hello world. So this functionality, <clears throat> which I'll move this down. This functionality, which is getting displayed here, has all the information to get the details from these records, 185 being the item ID, 16 being the type ID, and then it will just read those records and display them here. So in this picture here, it's uh, using the fact that it's got the, the data that is passed. Whenever we set up the versions button, we pass the type alias to it. <clears throat> and it's going to read those UCM history records and display them in this modal here. And there's various functionality associated with this. For example, we can click on something and we get a preview of the data. And you can see some of these fields here, description, greeting, alias. And these are picked off, these labels are picked off our form. So whenever we specify in our configuration data, <clears throat> this line here, this is our 
XML form associated with our Hello World editing record, the XML form associated with this page here. And so that form has got all of the details about the labels, which are obviously translated via our translation strings. So our com content history functionality is going to read this form or this XML file to pick off those labels as well and display them. Um, it's in the other window, isn't it? <clears throat> display them here. And if it can't find them because they're not displayed in the form, it'll just put out the field um, field name. And it also does things like uh, we can see category here. Category in our Hello World record is just a number, but what it's doing is it's going to the category table and um, finding which record that is and displaying the title. And that's enabled by this down here. So we're saying that for the category ID uh, field, the cat ID field, look in the categories table and match up the ID and find the display column being the title. So we can see also in this case that the com content history is reading our content types configuration data that we've specified there. <clears throat> so hopefully that uh, gives you a view of what's going on there. The only thing that isn't depicted on this diagram here is the restore. So if we go back to our restore, we can click on an item here. And I'll just bring this up again. <clears throat> I'll change to network. And clear that and click on restore and you can see here uh, it's taking a bit of time there <clears throat> that it is actually as a result of that store sent an HTTP request to the server and it's com hello world, this option is com hello world. The task is hello world dot load history. Now obviously in our hello world code, we don't have a load history that we've developed, but because we're inheriting from various legacy um, controllers, we will find that load history in there. And this, com hello world and hello world refers back to our type alias. So it's important that we call our type alias that we put in our content types table com hello world dot hello world because that's what is going to be used here for the restore. Um, and it's also got the version ID here. So the version ID refers to the uh, here it is here. The version ID refers to the particular version record that we've chosen. ID 185 of our Hello World record. It's that V2 version note. So it's got all that it needs to restore that record based on the version data that's stored in that field. Um, and as it says in the tutorial, uh, we just pass that type alias as a check just in case this database table is, is corrupt or something. We don't want to get our hello world record overwritten by something else like an article record. So it's just a, a double check that we put in there. So that's uh, really the main thing that I wanted to cover in this video. Uh, the only thing, uh, other thing I wanted to say was we've got a couple of UCM tables. We've got UCM history, UCM content, UCM base. So the question is, what actually is UCM? So I did a little search around the internet. Um, it turns out UCM is, I think, unified content management or something like that. And the idea, as I, uh, as I understand it, is that you could, rather than having content spread around different types of table, like banners or content or all these other sorts of things, um, if we look in the content types table, we see uh, articles, contents, news feeds. 
Um, and the suggestion was, well, why can't we lump all these into a common table? And just in the way that we've used the history table to hold the data for all of the different types of content that we have here, uh, well, we could do the same thing. Um, so that, I believe, what is what UCM was. Um, I came across this uh, article here written by uh, Nick, and I can't pronounce his second name, but he was the person who wrote the Akiba backup utility for Joomla and um, also for WordPress. Um, UCM was half-baked, is half-baked, and will forever remain half-baked, so let's just pull it out. We don't need it for content versioning, we can basically do it another way. Um, so it seems to be something that was kind of taken halfway, but then never really brought to fruition. Um, and it's worth it actually reading this blog, very interesting. And there are a couple of other related blogs by the same guy, but um, a lot of interesting suggestions about uh, where Joomla should go. And if you look down the bottom, you'll see um, comments as well from people involved in the Joomla development. The other thing is uh, this version 4 suggestion. I think a very powerful new feature could be added to Joomla very quickly, namely a content type system, uh, which uh, if you look down, um, you see there's already the APN, API data model for this in core UCM. So this is kind of like a suggestion for um, uh, implementing something like a UCM and it's interesting looking at the various uh, comments so I would recommend you having a wee look at that article as well. Okay that's it for this video in the next video we'll have a little look more in more detail about this aspect here and the Joomla observer pattern. Thanks for listening.